Hello, everybody, and welcome to our class on installing NextFlow. We've uh, learned the languages Bash, Git a little bit, and um, now we're going to use another language called NextFlow that will run genomic data for us. We basically tell us where the input files are, some parameters, the genome, and it does all the analyses you would want and could do an entire lab meeting on. But first, we have to install it. Um, so our server and no computer is going to have it installed by default, like Bash would be usually default installed. So this is just another language. We have to install it into our path and memory of our sessions um, with the terminal. And so I'm on our class 2023 here. You now have cloned this to your own. So you have you should be on your own site now. Uh, if you, there are some updates once in a while, you can check out um, different updates and um, copy and paste the files back into your um, Git repository. Okay, so that's there and we're in classes 03 NextFlow, installing NextFlow RMD here. And um, I am going to uh, use the code um, over here um, and there's an accompanying video on um, the basics of NextFlow. Um, it's a language that will manage a bunch of tasks. And so a lot of genomic data, ChIP-seq, RNA-seq, ATT&CK-seq, um, there's like a hundred repositories and we'll check that out in a second. Um, you can do all of that with this pipeline and it's highly, it's hundred percent reproducible. Um, all the version tracking is done, quality control. It's absolutely amazing. Things that had to be done individually can now be uh, streamlined into um, a pipeline. And that's from NF Core. And so it's all uh, written in here and we'll get to the code in just one second, but I do want to show you um, the NF Core uh, website here. This is just one um, certified pipeline uh, for ChIPSeq. So you can go from your sequence reads all the way to quality control peaks called all kinds of things are in here. Um, it's just really revolutionized what uh, what anybody, uh, even a beginner, can do. Um, so they have amazing uh, markdown. It's a great team. Um, uh, I really just has changed my life. So um, basically, you can go to installation, what type of, um, typically the things you want to look at are um, the parameters, what types of things does it want, like an input file, single end, fragment size, and we're going to go over all this in, in additional classes. But we need to install NextFlow, which NF Core speaks. NF Core speaks NextFlow. Fiji, our server or your computer, does not. And so there'll be a, a communicator or a translator for it. And that's what we're going to install right now. Okay. Um, what uh, also is cool is this is just one of this many <laughs> such things. So you name a type of seek RNA fusion um, and all of the cut and run uh, RNA seek, we'll use that one as well. And really the principles we're gonna learn, um, you can apply to all of these things, read the documentation in the input files and see what you get out. And it's usually a lot um, all in one go. Um, okay, that's the goal in the long run is to get to there. And um, so we're going to start now um, by installing it. And so whenever you install a new language or a new sort of environment, if you will, you're always going to do that in your home directory in the bin uh, directory. So I'm on our class VG. So it'd be the same if you're on your local computer. You'd go to your main directory with CD or CD tilde forward slash to be safe. And um, we can do a list here and see that we have a folder called bin here. And if you don't, um, you can just make a folder called bin and um, uh, go to that. Okay, so um, that is where I wanna go, CD bin, I'm gonna list, and this is what we're gonna install here is um, NextFlow. Um, I also have um, Miniconda installed to use Python and um, bioinformatics pipelines that run on that. Um, uh, so we're going to make this. You shouldn't have that in there yet. And so if you don't have one, you can make a directory bin um, here. And um, uh, so we're going to um, CD into our bin. 
And then we're going to use this command here, which is on the Nextflow install website, which is on the bottom of this document. But it's really great. This one line of code installs the ent entire thing for you. And so that is like how clever. And it's calling up bash to run a bash script that it's curling. We used wget before. Um, curl kind of is similar. And it's going to this website and it's going to run run a bash script, um, which we made in 01 or 02 uh, bash skills. So um, kind of cool. It's just a bash script and a get so or curl. All right. So we're going to do that now. Uh, CD, I'm already in bin. I'm actually not going to install this because uh, I have the current version I, I need. Um, but if you do that, you run it, um, you'll see it just install before your eyes. Um, so uh, that is cool. And so what, what we need to do now is th that one line just installed the whole entire Nextflow language. And so now our computer can speak that language. And so we're going to, next step we need to do is add it to our path. And the path is something you never really want to think about. After you do this, you won't really need to, as long as you install new languages in the bin directory. Um, but it's, it, it can be a bug. And so it's a good thing to know about um, if stuff isn't working or says, I don't recognize this path or not installed, so, so on. OK, so to see your path, you can uh, just do that. And this is actually a file, um, so that's not very easy to read. So we can use the transmute function. Um, here is a bash function to replace um, all the colons with a new line. Um, to separate it out because it's uh, colon uh, separated. So if we do it that way, I see it nice and neat and at least um, sort of in line. And so what we really want is user bin to get installed here. Um, I have way too many and even redundant ones. Um, but uh, so that's the path and that's when um, the session is initiated. It goes there and says, what languages can I possibly use? And if you call that one up, it knows where to go, um, like we will with Nextflow. OK, so um, if you then what you want to do is uh, add, make sure user bin um, is in your, your path. So if it's not, you can nano into it and um, type in user bin. It usually should have it already. Um, it's a common approach. Um, and uh, for uh, now, when you load the session, um, a profile um, is also uh, loaded. So if I look here at my um, profile, and, and you, you'll have one um, as well, and this is uh, my bash prompt uh, code here. Um, you can look at that again. Whoa. Um, don't know what's happening. Oh, I must have copied that. Get out of that. And um, copy that again. So what we can see is in here, just some things when the shell is initiated, some properties it does, like how I made my prompt look like this. And um, my path is to bin users and um, that's one uh, uh, part of it. And then there's other paths here to Nextflow. Um, so all you really need um, in, in, there's also, um, I have them all listed uh, in here and um, a little explanation here, but it's depending on what type of shell you're using, different things are there. So there's also a, a dot profile um, we can see here. Uh, um, uh, in my home directory, there I'm going to cat dot profile. Take a look at it, and all it is, and this is all you need to do is nano. Um, it's here uh, on these lines here is nano a dot profile um, file, and just type in this co uh, uh, path here to your bin directory and then install everything in your bin directory. And that is the probably the best practices for that to keep it simple. OK, so now that we've done that um, uh, and we have just made this um, in our dot profile, the same um, 
as mine, a little more on that. And then uh, we can, uh, we need to source, source our bash profile. I would actually say this for the purposes of simplicity, just be our dot profile. Um, that will be read um, and the properties in there will be executed. And um, as we saw, um, uh, this is just simply all that's in there um, is path equals path to my home directory and bin. Okay, that's enough about path. And if you got this part, that's all that really matters. Um, okay. Um, and so now you should be able to run Nextflow. Oh, sorry, you need to source it first. So we have, we source the uh, dot profile, you run that. And that way the session now has that in it. You can also close your terminal and reopen it um, and do that. And so uh, Nextflow, uh, you can type this to make sure you've got it uh, loaded um, and it should work, Nextflow dash version. And it'll tell you um, again, sort of how we called up Git. We're calling up Nextflow here, um, and it gives you um, the version um, at the time of this document. So uh, then um, we, I'm going to skip this part. If you want to practice with it, this is a great um, exercise to see how uh, powerful Nextflow is, where you can just pull this entire. Git repositories or how we cloned one. It's going to just go grab one and run and everything through it in Nextflow. And that um, is amazingly simple to install an entire pipeline that goes from sequencing reads all the way to peaks to QC outputs to a bunch of things we'll see um, in later classes. Okay, so uh, the, this is just some things you can do and watch it load for you. You can pick a version. Um, a specific version of the pipeline. Um, we're going to run 1.2.2, um, but you know this is just switching it to that. Um, the other uh, uh, thing is that we're in our class here is our sort of structure. And um, if you navigate to your folder uh, where you cloned it um, in our next flow, we're going to run uh, ChipSeq in the next uh, class. So you're going to run an entire ChipSeq. The, there's going to be a link to the data if you're not in the class um, that you can download some fastq files and we're going to do ChipSeq on poll two. Um, so that will be um, there and what that will look like is sort of this directory here where um, in classes we have our next flow. Um, we just finished 01 and um, we have uh, then the next thing, the in, what is the next flow chip seek pipeline need and what's going to output. Um, and then we're going to run uh, chip seek um, after that, or you can pretty much do it at the end of this one. Um, so we're going to run that in this folder here. You will have some of these, but you won't have um, these yet. We'll go through that. Uh, but just to show you where we are, we're going to be in next flow for a few uh, classes. And um, it's sort of this way we're going to continue to make our directory structure is have the RMDs here. And then um, anything we are running when we run the pipeline or generating data will be in a different folder. OK, um, there is some more here on sometimes if you're really cutting edge and you want like the latest single cell seek package or something, uh, Nextflow will need to be updated to an edge release because the pipeline is still being tested. Um, and it might be using a, a newer version. And so um, you can uh, do that by do, adding, just running this um, here. I don't recommend doing that for this class. You won't need it. Um, and then uh, if you also want to just get to the latest version, you can do Nextflow self-update. Um, if you want to get off the edge release, you can use this. Um, and then you can self-update to a specific version as well. Okay, that's it for installing Nextflow. We're good to go. Our computers can speak Nextflow now. Um, I wish it was so easy to learn a language, um, but here's, uh, we're gonna be using Nextflow pipelines. Um, we're not gonna be writing in it, but if, I wanted to share a little snippet that they have on their homepage um, uh, there of a little chunk of code you can uh, do and then run and just see how Nextflow is talking. Um, and you'll see um, how a new language is kind of speaking. Um, and then there's the uh, 
way to run it um, and uh, some uh, uh, some more about that. So um, this is all we will do as far as writing in Nextflow and just sort of going over their um, like their key example on their website. Um, and uh, that is it. Thank you very much and uh, be well.